Hello guys, how are you doing today? I am doing pretty dang good. I feel way more motivated for some reason. <laughs> So in today's video, I want to talk about why I believe your mental health has to come first before everything and anything. So as some of you guys know, I used to be a personal trainer and I loved being a personal trainer. I love working out. I love fitness more than basically anything and everything. Fitness is my niche. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I feel like there's a big gap or a big thing missing in the fitness industry. And I didn't realize that until I had my own mental breakdown, my own crazy anxiety attack, panic attack, time of my life where just I felt like I didn't have a grip on my life anymore, but I was in the best shape of my life. I had a job that was, you know, taking care of me. I was living perfectly fine. I was in a, gr I was in a relationship. I had friends like... There's no reasoning for this mental breakdown, but it happens and it really made me realize like, yes, just because I eat healthy, yes, just because I work out, yes, because I have people in my life, yes, because I look organized and I'm clean, blah, 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 doesn't necessarily mean that I have been taking care of my mental health. And that's what really intrigued me when it came to mental health because I have a very beautiful, abundant life and somehow my mental health still makes this experience so dreadful and painful and there's no reason for it besides my own brain and that's when I really realized like there is something I am missing when it comes to my mind body and spirit so obviously as you guys maybe can tell from this channel I have been working on my mental health for the past year and a half and I've been documenting a lot of it it might not seem like I was documenting it but that's what I was really doing at the end of the day um, and then I started discovering mental health and really diving deep into mental health. And it is something that I think is so freaking important. And I'm so grateful that it's starting to get the attention it deserves. I think mental health should have been the first thing we're taught in kindergarten and a whole class throughout high school and a whole category in college. Like I think mental health is so downplayed when ugh, I could go on forever about it. But anyway, I'm very passionate about mental health and I feel like I just got to a point in my life where my mental health is the strongest it's ever been. So I feel like I'm really ready to talk about it and what I have been doing for my own mental health. And mental health is about to be a huge foundation and chunk of my career because I believe mental health and fitness literally have to go 50-50 and I have I've done so much work when it comes to the fitness like I have been studying and working out and training people for all together the whole fitness journey thing has been about seven years and mental health now has been about almost going to be two so I feel like I'm starting to get enough time to feel confident in talking about these subjects with you guys and actually start putting some content and things out there for you guys to help you the way it's helped me. So, when it comes to mental health, number one, number th number, th oh my god, this is where my stuttering is insane, okay. Woo! Number one thing I believe you need to do for your mental health is see a therapist. Even if you think you are completely sane, I still think you need to see a therapist just for that subconscious mind. Not the conscious person that is sitting here in front of this camera talking to you guys, the side of your brain that you're not really aware of, but it definitely does need to have those talks with someone that's outside of your life. We tend to go to our friends and family members for advice all the time, and that's great. Like They are there to love you and care for you, but at the end of the day, it's always good to have a third party perspective, and your therapist tends to call you out on your bull crap. And I think a lot of people need that because even myself, I can get really full of myself and self-loathe 
way too much and my therapist tends to be a person that like kind of puts me back in perspective and holds me accountable to my own behavior and really shows me the whole perspective of things rather than just my perspective and family members and friends that love me because of course they're going to have more of my perspective rather than you know telling me things that are wrong with me so it's a great place for you just to check yourself so I mean even the best of the best see therapists like there is no shame in seeing and going to a therapist Amelia is joining us today you guys haven't seen her for a while she is entering into some teenage years I think she is getting quite to be the grumpy little pig but she's only gonna be little for so long so I might as well hold her The second thing I do for my mental health daily is I journal. I also believe it helps you, you know, just put together these crazy thoughts sometimes you have or you can kind of catch yourself as to like, uh, maybe I am acting a little nuts. And then it also helps you reflect on the past and you can see your past and also you can use journaling for manifesting, you can use it for surrendering, you can use journaling for so many things of your life it's not necessarily a diary like diary like during the whole diary thing that's you know that's cool and all but I'm talking about where you are taking the time to write good things about yourself taking the time to you know maybe make pro and con lists of relationships that are in your life just you really use that time of journaling time to like really go back to the board of your life and see what department your life needs help in so if you ever were to look through my journal there's a bunch of scripting there's a bunch of planning, there's a bunch of business schemes and plans, there's a bunch of surrendering, there's just a bunch of tools, not necessarily me complaining about my life. I think there's a big difference between like having a diary and like saying what's going on in your life rather than, you know, journaling for your mental health and really using some mental health exercises to get that anxiety or those weird emotions out. Amelia. Ah. You are being so bad. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. The third thing I believe you need to be doing continuously for your mental health is reading and reading as many books as you possibly can. Ah, I just truly don't understand how people aren't intrigued to pick up as many books as they are. I understand I might be from a different breed, I might be different, but I, when there's so much information and knowledge in the world, like I, I just can't absorb it fast enough or get it fast enough, I'm constantly reading as you guys know. I think I easily have read at least 60 to 70 books in the past two and a half years. That's quite a bit of books for a person. Um, and it is truly what keeps my mind so sane. It is the one thing that I know if I'm freaking out too bad, it's most likely because I haven't been reading lately. And, you know, everyone has excuses for not having enough time to read. But honestly, for your own mental health, like once you understand that reading, especially in subjects that you're suffering in, like maybe you're codependent, maybe you have anxiety, maybe you have depression, maybe you're having, you know, these crazy up and down emotions with food or fitness or you're having relationship problems, just get knowledge on it, like, like constantly try to learn for yourself and your life. Like, I just, I truly don't understand how so many people don't choose to read on the daily constantly and reading subjects that truly help your mental health. So I believe reading books on mental health help your mental health so freaking much. It gives you so many tools. It gives you so many like epiphanies there's so many amazing moments i have of relief when it comes to reading a good book that just makes so much sense and something that i've been needing to hear for so long and yeah reading my go-to and i'm currently reading the five second rule by mel robbins the five second rule i started reading it believe it or not like right before i broke up with my ex-boyfriend so i clearly have not been reading it at all but i picked it up yesterday and i started on chapter two and i'm already basically done i i have like this many more pages left so i'll definitely be done today and just by reading this book literally just by reading this book 
yesterday I feel 10 times more better. I'm like, this is why you read, Marissa. It makes you feel so much better. It. So I believe when you read, you have something else to talk about that helps the next person you're gonna talk to. When you spend a good chunk of your day on Instagram or reading gossip blogs or watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians or just doing something that, you know, feeds that like ew side of your brain, you're gonna talk mainly about those things. But when you spend a good chunk of your time reading books, you're gonna talk about that thing that you're reading to other people. And normally when you're reading a cool self-help book, you're gonna give someone else like advice that they just might need to hear that day. So reading for me is definitely like my go-to for mental health, especially when you read s subjects on things that you're struggling from, like I already said. So read, 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 read. The fourth thing I do for my mental health is I have started practicing gratitude and affirmations and reciting affirmations for my mental health. So mental health at the end of the day is like brain training thanks to someone who watched one of my old videos told me it's called brain training. So with your mental health you brain train. So when I brain, when you are brain training that is a prime time for your affirmations and your gratitude to come on in especially if you're having a really hard time or you're complaining a bunch, or you're gossiping in the middle of it as fast as you can. Be like, this is not who I choose to be. This is not my true identity. This is not my true self. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be breathing in this air. I'm grateful for water. I'm grateful for this vessel. I'm grateful for this planet. I'm grateful for this roof. And just start reciting everything you're grateful for. And affirmations. The first thing you should be saying to yourself in the morning is some positive ass affirmations. And in my bathroom, um, I have a bunch of post-its, I'm sure you guys have seen them before, a bunch of post-its of all these affirmations, and I say those affirmations, I kid you not, basically every single time I go to the bathroom, just because I know I'm retraining my subconscious mind and I'm retraining my brain to be more positive. When you are more positive, you start attracting more positive. It's scientifically freaking proven, people. So... <laughs> A major key thing for my mental health is affirmations and gratitude and it's so simple and I started doing this new thing when it comes to cooking so I've wanted to be vegan for quite some time but honestly maybe my mental health isn't strong enough there maybe I don't have enough willpower yet I don't know what it is but there's this block I have with going vegan especially when it comes to how much weight I start losing I was losing my hair it's a mess so I just know I'm making this gradual change but since I still eat some animal products the whole time I'm cooking that animal product and the whole time I'm eating the animal product, all I do is fill my soul with gratitude and I thank that animal. I even thank the lettuce or the arugula I'm using. I thank everything as I'm about to ingest it and eat it. And I kid you not, it just it gives you just such a better feeling about life. I used to be pretty negative, like not really an excited person that like to dance around and be happy and lately like I've just been you know on cloud nine with life and I think it's because I'm finally putting all my mental health things together. The fifth thing I did for my mental health and that you should do for your mental health as well is be genuinely honest with yourself. The saddest part about life is we start to be put in categorized. We start to be categorized and put into categories. But un and unfortunately, we start to identify that with ourselves. And for a very long time, I struggled with my own self-identity. I kind of became whatever people wanted me to be. I had my own belief systems. I had my own desire of the person I want to be but I was too afraid to be that person because I already fell into one certain type of category and I was comfortable there and changing myself and becoming a new person is very difficult especially because you know the whole comfort zone thing we love a good old comfort zone anyway so about three years ago is when I had to be honest with myself or no two and a half years ago when I had my mental breakdown, I had to be really honest with myself. I had to be like, is my life actually what it's supposed to be? Would I be having a mental breakdown if I was making the right choices for myself? And chances are, no, I was lying to myself a lot. And part of your mental health journey is being honest with yourself, being honest with the job 
you have, being honest with what school you attend to, being honest with the friendships you have, being honest with your family dynamic, being honest with your living situation, being honest with your relationship, your intimate partner, boyfriend, girlfriends, whatever relationship you have with someone, making sure that it actually is fulfilling you and you're not just in it because you're comfortable at this very moment. So I had to just start being honest with all of my relationships, every single person in my life and see where we, I stood in the relationship with them and if it's where I wanted to be or if it's where I didn't want to be and if the relationship was fueling me or if it was draining me. And I looked at a lot of my relationships and realized I was surrounding myself with a lot of people that just really weren't in it for Marissa. And I was just, you know, doing a lot for other people. And the reason as to why I got out of the relationship I was just in was my like last big mental health kick. And that was being honest with myself and like really being honest with myself because we tend to lie to ourselves a lot. Like if you actually track at what you say you're gonna do and what you actually do for yourself and the things you want to do that you actually actually have the nerve to do for yourself, you don't do, you don't really take care of yourself and you're really not honest with yourself a lot of the time. So I really had to get the strength to be honest with myself because it is very hard. You, you really will come into some hurdles when it comes to this step because you realize how much you lie to yourself and how much you've been just blanking out and not paying attention to and really just, it's, it's an insane step, but I promise you once you do it, or I think, I'm still in the middle of it, I just made that big decision so I don't fully know what it feels like to be at the end of it, at the, at the other side of it, but I believe at the other side is a beautiful place of self-love. <laughs> So just be genuinely honest with the relationships you have in your life, the people that are in your life, and with yourself, everything. Just look at everything and don't think nothing isn't important. Everything is important. Even the way you have your room organized, even the color of the wall you have painted in your house. Be honest with yourself. Become that person you finally have always wanted to be and don't be afraid to be that person. Because the saddest thing, the saddest thing in the world is an untold story of a soul that needed to just emerge. The sixth thing I do for my mental health is if I'm really struggling, I definitely will unplug, put my phone somewhere else, I won't look at it, I'll turn it off. Um, social media, I'm sure you guys all relate. It definitely impacts your mental health. It definitely takes a toll on our mental health. I definitely don't think we all know that we're all semi-addicted to technology and our phones, and I don't think there's enough research, tools, anything yet that's really gonna tell us how badly this is gonna affect our mental health in the long run, but for now, I feel like we're all a little screwed. We're all holding on for dear life, hoping, you know, it's not gonna mess us up, mess us up too much, but anyway. I know I struggle with my phone so much and if I'm having a really hard time or if I'm like in a really bad mindset, I know what I'm doing on my phone is so self-sabotaging, it's not even funny and I've learned that I just gotta like take that phone away from me. I, there's so many times I'm just like, I'm gonna throw it in the ocean, I can't do this anymore. So <laughs> for my mental health, I definitely, definitely, definitely try to stay away from my phone as much as possible. It is so freaking hard, but I know when I'm taking care of my mental health is when I'm on my phone the least amount. I love that feeling. I love, love, love that feeling of knowing I'm barely, I've barely been on my phone today because that means I'm really absorbing this moment. I'm really absor observing this, absorbing this day and taking in the now. <laughs> These phones are nothing but the past. Everything that's on them is the past. Everything. Even the thing that was posted a second ago, it's part of the past. This physical realm that we're in right now, here, is what's real and what's in the now. And that's the only thing that matters. I always have to constantly remind myself that this phone is a great tool, but only use it for a tool. Don't use it as a drug. <laughs> The sixth step to my mental health journey was self-love, but that's the next step. So I'm not gonna give you too much 
on my self-love because I just made a video about self-love so you kind of get it. I kind of did it a little backwards. I think mental health is first and then self-love, but I'm on the self-love part, so it's documenting the self-love part, so just know mental health was like back there. Now on the self-love step, but part of your mental health journey, the next step is self-love and looking at yourself honestly, again, holding yourself accountable and being like, am I genuinely taking care of myself? How are my nails looking? How's my breath kicking? How do my eyebrows look? Have I brushed my hair? What does my room look like? All those questions will definitely answer where your mental health is because chances are if you're doing none of those things for yourself, your mental health game is off. So first, do the first five things, get a grip on that, then we're going to drift off into self-love where I'm currently at right now. Actually, this, after this video, I have to go clean my room because, you know, self-love is quite the damn dirty, people. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It means a, the world to me that you guys take the time to watch these little videos of mine. And thank you again so much for spending some time with me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful day. And do not forget, you are what you think about.